Pak Trihadi from Tahija Foundation and to Daniel, uh, one of the respected member on Board of Advisor of Harvard Club Indonesia, who's been leading in initiating this collaborative discussions between Harvard Club Indonesia and Tahija Foundation. And again, to all participants who have spared their Wednesday afternoon to discuss on these promising initiatives that will bring us to the beginning of dengue free world. So let me share um, a bit of my personal experience with dengue. Um, back in 2008, uh, at the time I was still a medical student. I still remember clearly the one afternoon when I was learning as doctor's co-assistant in one of the largest hospitals in South Jakarta. I was working in emergency room and there was a kid around eight years old entered the ER with a wheelchair. His mother was on his side saying that her son was ill with fever and got weaker only that day. In less than an hour, the kid became unconscious and passed away. Turned out he had dengue shock. It was a very sad afternoon. I hardly slept that week thinking why such deaths could happen and wonder what could have been done differently. And fast forward to 2014. I was a student in Harvard School of Public Health. Uh, I took a social impact course about dengue vaccine in emerging market, particularly in Indonesia. But the problem with the new dengue vaccines are, one, it's expensive. Two, at the moment, the vaccines are still under clinical trial, and there are possibilities that it will not create immunity to all dengue variants. So when I read the article that Daniel shared about World Mosquito Program in this early 2021, I was thrilled. The groundbreaking experiment with Wolbachia method is, I think it's a real hope. Decade of hard work done by Prof. Oates team, supported by Tahija Foundation, has created a monumental contribution to the world of public health, not only for Indonesia, but of course globally. I can see that we are now moving towards a bright light at the end of of a very long tunnel in fights against dengue. So in this opportunity, I would like to humbly thank you personally, Prof. Uut, Dr. Shakon, Dr. Claudia, Patri Hadi, and all of the World Mosquito Project team for all the hard works, the significant contribution, the wonderful present for Indonesia's Independence Day that we as a nation can contribute to a better, healthier world. I hope all of you are always in good health. I really look forward to hear the discussion in the next hour. So now I would like to give the mic to Daniel as the moderator uh, to, begin, to begin the discussion. Thank you. Please, Daniel, the mic is yours. Thank you so much, Norul. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, happy belated Independence Day. Uh, we hope that everyone is healthy. Uh, and um, we're very excited to present another uh, program from uh, Harvard Club Indonesia, of which Nurul is the, the vice president. So um, today um, we are going to be talking about, uh, we're still in the middle of a pandemic, but uh, we are going to be talking about uh, a health issue which actually affects uh, more than 400 million people a year. Uh, cost uh, close to a million people to go to hospital every year and kills, uh, you know, 40 to 50,000 people a year and mostly in countries in, um, in Asia, in Southeast Asia, South Asia, Africa, and Latin America, even though now it's uh, present in 120 countries around the world. So this initiative, um, uh, for me as an Indonesian, I'm very, very uh, uh, proud that this um, uh, something like this uh, can be done uh, by uh, you know putra putri bangsa, and um, you know very excited to uh, discuss it with 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 everyone here. So uh, without uh, further ado, um, so what we're gonna do is to talk to Dr. Shakon. Uh, Professor Adi Utarini and also then uh, Dr. You know, Claudia Suryajaya. Uh, and then afterwards, we're going to open for uh, Q&A so we can have a, uh, you know, uh, interesting, you know, discussion and question and answer. Uh, 
for all the participants. So let me start with um, Dr. Uh, Shakon Tahia, uh, who is the chairman of the board of trustee of the, the Tahia Foundation. Uh, and uh, he's also the founder and medical director of Clinic Mata Nusantara, which I personally and you know my family use all the time. So, um, and uh, the Tahia Foundation obviously is uh, the, uh, uh, the initiator, uh, the funder, and also the uh, administrator of uh, this amazing you know, program, which is called the World uh, Mosquito Program. So, uh, Dr. Shakon, could I ask you to uh, explain a bit about the Tahia Foundation and also uh, how um, uh, the foundation started and then decided to do this program? Thank you, pa, Daniel. Uh, I have a short PowerPoint, which uh, I think will explain these things. So the, 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 this World Mosquito Program and the funding part is by the Tahia Foundation is only, of course, in Indonesia. Yeah, but the the whole idea of getting into dengue started when uh, our parents, Jean and Julius Tahia, passed away, and in two thousand and two, um, we wanted to do a philanthropic uh, memorial. The foundation uh, focus has always been on the vision mission of creating a better Indonesia, yeah, through sustainable partnerships. We chose the fields of healthcare, education, and environmental conservation as a focus. Let me see if I can get this thing to move. Yeah, try the screen, okay. So when they passed away, we searched, we wanted to create a philanthropic memorial. It had to benefit Indonesia, have as large impact as possible for the money spent. We're not a very big foundation, so it had to be extremely effective, yeah. We received several proposals and finally decided to go with dengue. Why dengue? Well, it's a potentially lethal disease. It can affect all levels of society. It doesn't matter how wealthy you are or how poor you are. Everyone can get dengue. Everyone knows someone where uh, lost a family member due to dengue in Indonesia. My daughter was seriously ill with dengue as well. And there are no successful long-term control programs. So we were, uh, we were approached by this uh, scientist uh, from the States and, and uh, he suggested a dengue program um, where the immature mosquitoes controlled by a larvicide and if enough were killed of the immature mosquitoes, the hypothesis was that you would prevent dengue epidemics because there won't be enough adult mosquitoes, yeah? The, the way dengue is uh, eradication is carried out now using fogging and uh, many other things, it costs a lot of money and has never been effective. So, we wanted to do something about that, yeah. Going into a, into a field that you don't know about uh, and taking a bet, it's referred to as venture philanthropy. You're willing to gamble your money on unproven control methods, yeah. You have to get involved there and, and try to make it happen, just like a venture capital company investing The target was to fund a medium 
science study in to a practical cost effective way to control a mature IADES aegypti. However, it grew. It grew until we covered a city of 500,000 people and lasted seven years. Every, uh, using the Indonesian term, bak air, yeah, bak mandi, and sumur in this area in central Jogja had this uh, uh, chemical called sumilav uh, placed into it. It's uh, safe for human uh, consumption in low doses. And it was supposed to work with the immature uh, mosquitoes so that they wouldn't become adults. Yeah, it didn't kill them, just uh, made them grow not right. We ended up funding an organization of 360 people who went from house to house, continuously monitoring the places that we put these, this sumi larve and where the containers were still there. We got to know the government, we got to know the people, yeah? And the people knew the Tahia Foundation. What happened after five years and spending 5 million US dollars, we found out that the control of immature mosquitoes, although successful yeah, in the containers, didn't stop the population, didn't make this population of adult mosquitoes smaller. So the, 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 this whole study, I wouldn't say it's a failure, but it showed that trying to control uh, immature mosquitoes, yeah, uh, doesn't doesn't work, yeah. We ended up with more mature mosquitoes, in fact, because there are many cryptic breeding sites that you can't reach. So what did we do there? We recruited staff, established an organizational structure. We provided management, financial, and human resources skills. We got involved. We developed a new church relationships with the government officials, health department, and the university. The original hypothesis was disapproved. And so what do we do? We'd established a good organization and George, my brother and I were getting ready to close it up. We've, uh, and you know, just finish this didn't work out. Then a scientist, the top dengue scientist in, uh, in the world, I still think, Dr. Duane Gubler came and said, why shut it down? You have the infrastructure and I have a couple of projects that could go into this infrastructure. One of them was the release of sterile mosquitoes. Yeah, continuous release of sterile mosquitoes. We were not attracted to that because when it's going to finish, you keep on pumping these sterile mosquitoes. The other project, he said, was releasing mosquitoes that had this uh, bacterium called Wolbachia inside it and it would, replace natural mosquitoes and, and prevent dengue uh, spreading permanently. Now we thought this is a great idea. So in 2011, uh, we signed an agreement with Monash University for a study using Wolbachia for dengue control in Jakarta. I won't go into details because Professor Tarini will do it, but basically, uh, September the 1st, 2011, we, we started with the first phase and then that went on. First, it was safety. After that, proving that the mosquitoes will stay in a certain area. You know, you can establish a population, it works. So safety first, it worked. And then we went on to phase three, which were the two big trials. After that was proven and has been published that it works, we 
we moved on to an implementation or rollout, no longer an experiment, it's proven it works into two provinces, uh, not provinces, Kabupaten, so districts, uh, Sleman and Banto. And this is ongoing. It just started this year, but of course the COVID came in, so we have to start all over again. I'll show you the amount of money that we spent. For the first period, yeah, phase one, proving safety, that was around 3 million bucks. Phase two, 4.1. Phase three, 6.2 million. And so on. So that in the, and then for this next period, uh, about 5 million this year, and then uh, 2 million to release in the other area. So the, 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 the total disbursement up to June was 15.2 million and uh, total projected lifetime, yeah, if Sleman and Bantul are done, it's about 17.2. But if you look at the amount of money that's needed for Sleman and Bantul, that's only, only, uh, two and a half million for these two uh, large districts filled with a very large population. Now, if you look at the amount of money that needs to be spent on fogging and other things which doesn't work, and this is a method that you go in one shot and it fixes the area permanently, well, that is, uh, according to me, a very good deal. And so that's the background. Prof. Utarini will, of course, go into details and show pictures and everything of the of uh, how this is done. But this gives the background why George and I uh, got involved with this project. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shakon. And I just have one question before we go to, uh, you know, Professor Usarini. Um, so uh, I guess when you started the foundation, uh, you and uh, by George, uh, as a good business person said, you know, we want to make the money count as much as possible, right? But then you do a venture philanthropy, which is a very interesting concept where um, I guess if you win big, you can, you know, as far as venture, it can win big or you can lose everything. So how do you reconcile that? And, um, you know, now it, it's been proven to be successful, but I'm sure uh, when you are doing it, it's it you know there there must be some worrying times. Yes, of course. After the first uh, venture failed, yeah, uh, this type of venture philanthropy is different from business, of course, because you don't get anything back as far as money is concerned. After the first one uh, was finished, we yeah Suda will do regular philanthropy, you know, scholarships and things like that. But then, uh, but then the, the, the story that came from the World Mosquito Program that was presented to us sounded extremely good. And the management of the World Mosquito Program under Scott O'Neill was also very tight, you know, uh, the science and such. But we, uh, George uh, specifically, of course, after getting, we got hurt by the first uh, trial, yeah. This trial, there were very clear milestones that were put into place that had to be proven before we disbursed any more money out. So we got, we, we, we got very involved in this uh, uh, study. It was step by step, if it breaks off, when you're showing the safety, uh, that's it. But the safety worked. Okay, we go to the next step with milestones. Yeah, we had presentations every three months from uh, Gajamada and also from uh, uh, WMP to 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 tell us what the progress was. And there was a lot of questions from uh, the family, and 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 so we learned. You can't just let this thing go, yeah? We went step by step and, 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 and Gajamada and uh, Monash and WMP 
uh, went there uh, with us also. So finally, fortunately, uh, they turned out positive. Thank you, Dr. Shakon. That's an amazing story. Um, let me uh, go to Professor Adi Utarini now, or I guess uh, she said she'd like to be called Professor Uut. Uh, Professor Uut is uh, the project uh, leader of uh, the World Mosquito Program in Indonesia. Uh, she is also um, the uh, a faculty member of the uh, Medical School of University of Gajah Mada, I guess completing is Fakultas Kedokteran, Kesehatan Masyarakat, dan Keperawatan of University of Gajah Mada. Uh, because of this program, uh, Professor Uwut was also named uh, one of uh, Nature, Nature's uh, influential um, uh, you know, scientific magazine. Uh, she was named one of Nature's 10 people who shaped science in 2020, which is, uh, you know, very proud of us as Indonesians. So, uh, Professor Uut, uh, you know, maybe you can explain to us the science and the process of uh, this amazing project. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Daniel, for the introduction. And hi, everyone. Um, Thank you for this opportunity. It's always a pleasure to share um, our work. And I think to begin with, I'd like to acknowledge the people of Yogyakarta, uh, um, where the study is devoted to, and also certainly our collaborators, uh, Tahir Family, Tahir Foundation, uh, Monash University and WMP Global, and also, uh, well, I guess I'm representing the Universitas Gajah Mada. So, all right, let me share my screen. Yeah, um, um, I, I intend to show also some videos, but um, let's see if I manage to do that. But I, I, I have Mas Faisal to help me <laughs> in case I need. So uh, this is to share about the journey, and it's been quite a long journey, um, ten, more than 10 years of journey. Pleasant journey overall. Uh, of course, uh, we have uh, challenges here and there, but yeah, I, I think in all, all the science uh, discovery, we always face uh, challenges. So I will start with the, I think I will skip the, the burden of dengue, everyone knows. And also we all have friends um, getting dengue. I had it twice. So I don't want to spend time on that. And then the technology uh, a little bit, hoping that you had seen the video uh, showed the beginning uh, of, this, of this discussion. And then most importantly is the, how we did the intervention and its efficacy of the intervention. And then certainly this kind of intervention would have not been possible uh, without a great uh, community acceptance and also stakeholder acceptance. And then finally we move forward. How do we uh, move forward? Uh, on the left part, uh, you saw a little bit of Javanese and Indonesian uh, languages stating that you know, we need to be patient for us to finally uh, discover something and then implement for the benefit of the society at large. All right. Um, yeah, I think the point that I would like to make here is that uh, if we compare Indonesia compared to other countries, then we are on the, I believe, on the second uh, top countries for uh, contributing to dengue infections. And uh, also the other fact is, I think this is partly what makes it uh, neglected globally is that uh, of the funding issue that is available for dengue. So despite the high cost of dengue, and this was done by uh, research by colleagues in Universitas Indonesia, um, and actually this is much higher than, for example, if we compare to malaria elimination program, but um, I think in Indonesia, dengue is, is not yet 
seen as attractive or worth investment. I think this is probably the same in other countries. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, for the, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, before, before I continue on the World Bank here itself, uh, there's one point which I like uh, us to pay attention to is that uh, if we think about dengue, um, we think about the mosquito called Aedes aegypti. And uh, so far, all the efforts for the, um, to educate the community and also the government to do factor control um, has not been so effective, has not been so successful. Uh, Indonesia now it's already in its more than 50 years of the program. And we still struggle how to make the people uh, uh, consistently apply this uh, mosquito control, breeding control, uh, involving you know different groups of the community, the women and the children. You saw here they are also actively involved, but yet uh, it's very difficult to get rid of the mosquitoes. So that's why this uh, technology is appealing. Now, importantly, is that the graph here, um, just pay attention to the blue uh, lines. This shows that the mosquitoes, Aedes aegypti, is, is always around us all, all year through. Yeah, All the time we have Aedes aegypti uh, with us. And um, there's no point in time where we can... Uh, we, we don't find uh, these mosquitoes with us. Now, uh, even though if we look at the seasonal variation of the disease, uh, yes, the disease in Yogyakarta particularly is uh, tend to be increasing when it's uh, season. But in fact, these mosquitoes are there, present all the time. So, um, so this, this is the uh, characters, characteristics of, of the mosquitoes. Um, you've, you have seen this, uh, how the Wolbachia works through the video. Um, and I think just to pinpoint the, the, um, the most important uh, message that whenever we uh, deliver to the community is that what we are trying to say is that we are fighting the virus not just the mosquitoes, because um, uh, this, this, when Wolbachia is present in the mosquitoes uh, body, then the effect is to suppress the uh, development of the dengue virus. So we are trying also to, to find ways to the community, uh, helping them to separate between, yes, this is mosquitoes around us, but also there's a virus that causing um, dengue. And yeah, um, the technology, the way it works is that uh, once we do the deployment, and later I will show a video of how we deploy uh, Wolbachia Aedes aegypti mosquitoes. Um, once we deploy it um, regularly, and this is through uh, every two weeks through using a container, you will later see. The hope is that the mosquitoes will uh, match with the uh, natural mosquitoes in the in the habitat, and then uh, by the time um, these uh, mosquitoes will be sort of replaced by this Wolbachia aedes aegypti mosquitoes. So that's uh, sort of the the idea of the technology, right? So Dr. Shakon has explained these uh, uh, phases, and I will I will uh, repeat this, but just to uh, uh, point some some important phase. I think the phase three is what you have probably heard throughout the media, uh, the randomized control trial of the Wolbachia technology, uh, which I will show the result. So from the scientific perspective, maybe this is phase three is really the, how do you say, the, the peak of uh, scientific interest, you know, it's, it's trial, it's as a public health um, experts, I feel that, you know, this is, this is the gold standard. But 
actually after that i think uh, phase four which is called the implementation model is actually much more <laughs> interesting so to say because the main challenge is to really implement uh, to the community right so this is the intervention uh, we use these uh, containers it's a small containers um, and this is a one-time intervention done within a period of time, about six months. And the way it works is that we put the egg uh, inside the container and also water and then the food uh, for the mosquitoes. And then we put it in, in uh, people's houses, but also offices, different areas. So we basically deploy it every two weeks, every fortnightly. And then we change the eggs, replace the water, et cetera, up to about 10 to 14 rounds. So we deploy it in all areas. And then we monitored uh, Wolbachia and then also monitored the dengue cases. So to, to clarify this, uh, I will ask uh, Mas Faisal, can you show us the video stated there? itu masih sepupu diam duduk aja kok tahu-tahu udah apa badannya itu membiru satu satu minggu itu kan yang kena pira terus anak saya sendiri terus selang berapa hari lagi juga yang RW lain itu ada kakak adik juga kena DP UMP Yogyakarta adalah penelitian pertama menggunakan sampel terbesar untuk membuktikan dampak teknologi nyamuk Aedes aegypti berwolbachia terhadap outcome penyakit yaitu demam berdarah. Kegiatan utama saya dan tim uh, yang tergabung dalam tim entomologi lapangan uh, yaitu melakukan kegiatan pelepasan telur nyamuk Aedes aegypti yang sudah berwolbachia. Ya kalau terkait inovasinya ya kalau menurut saya uh, inovasi yang apa yang memang sangat-sangat berbeda dari sebelumnya dilakukan tahap persiapan kelayakan pelepasan nyamuk di wilayah terbatas dan baru pelepasan di wilayah luas untuk membuktikan dampaknya dan memang terbukti bahwa wolbachia bisa menurunkan transmisi uh, uh, dengi di kota Jogja akan keberhasilan penelitian sehingga masyarakat sangat luar biasa responnya mereka sangat menyambut dengan baik dan mendukung kegiatan penelitian ini ibaratnya adalah dari Jogja untuk dunia thank you yeah so uh, through this video i think hopefully you've uh, seen a little bit of the how we did the deployment and also some of the uh, facilities how the communities uh, responded to this to this intervention i will now um, continue uh, with my slides Yes. Um, yeah. So that's uh, that's how we did the intervention in Yogyakarta, and uh, through these uh, containers, uh, this is the point where we we would build uh, our engagement with the community. And for example, we we say uh, this is. Uh, 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 the way to say protect me and i will protect you you know protect this uh, container so that uh, the mosquitoes will protect the people from from getting dengue uh, and interestingly also the community make uh, a lot of efforts to do their best 
to really protect these uh, containers. Yeah, so these are in Bahasa Indonesia something like "Don't touch me," uh, "Don't uh, don't take this uh, container," etc. And even in in some example we have where they wrote, you know, this container is owned by the government, so don't take it. <laughs> something like that. All right, so how did we start the intervention? Uh, certainly we started with a small area, small pilot areas. Uh, in four areas, you can see the name on the left. And in total, this is about 10,000 population only. This was back in 2014. And during that pilot, um, uh, what, what was uh, found very challenging was that we were asked to do uh, individual informed consent by the ethical committee. And also we were asked to monitor dengue actively in the community. What, was, uh, what we were trying to learn at that time was that uh, we wanted to know whether these uh, Wolbachia mosquitoes, once they are released in the community, would they be sustainable? Would they be able to naturally uh, develop themselves so that uh, the mosquitoes will say stay there and then we'll get more and more uh, mosquitoes with Wolbachia. And the areas with the block in blue, uh, that shows that was the period when we did the deployment. Um, so the deployment was done for about six months and then it stopped. And then we keep monitoring uh, how much mosquitoes in the areas with Wolbachia. And in this paper, it shows that, um, yeah, up to 2016, some are more 2017, and even actually the, the current data shows that Wolbachia is sustainable in that area. So this, this gives a, a very uh, ideal situation, like, uh, one point in time intervention, and then it will be sustained. And then from, from this uh, experience, then uh, this, this was like our, our uh, milestone for the next step, which is a much larger uh, scale, scale up, much larger uh, release in the areas of Yogyakarta city. Now, Yogyakarta city is about 500,000 population. Uh, it's an urban setting uh, with a lot of, uh, Jogja is a tourist destination, second tourist destination in Indonesia. So it's uh, uh, urban, a lot of tourist areas, a lot of educational centers in the city. And here we again saw a similar pattern that once we deploy Wolbachia uh, satisfactorily, uh, reach a certain cut of point, um, usually we say 60%, then it will naturally um, develop in the, in the community, in the population, um, natural population. So we saw here that the mosquitoes with Wolbachia, the frequency of mosquitoes with Wolbachia is uh, continuously high in the population. And also what is uh, interesting is that they seem to be uh, spreading, although a bit slowly. Now from the trial point of view, uh, of course we have to take into account this fact because the, in some of the control areas are contaminated. So we have taken this into account when we analyze the data. But from the public health perspective, this is interesting because the mosquitoes slowly uh, spread into the surrounding areas. Um, another interesting fact was that um, we are releasing mosquitoes, but the mosquito we release is number one is uh, safe and it has wall back here. And then also actually in terms of the amount of mosquitoes we release is actually very small. Um, here we try to show the, the blue lines is the uh, mosquitoes in the intervention areas and the gray lines is the mosquitoes in the control areas. And you could see that even before we actually release the mosquitoes, uh, the number of the mosquitoes um, varies. And in some uh, periods of the months, for example, July 2015, you know, very high uh, mosquito population. Uh, 
So the population dynamic is there already. And then during the release with the block, uh, uh, Wolbachia has no impact on population dynamics. Very small amount of mosquito that we release compared to the existing number of mosquitoes in the population. So that's um, the intervention uh, itself, how we did it, um, and then uh, a little bit of, of the science in it. Now, uh, the ultimate question is, what's the efficacy? And of course, this is uh, what, what people are curious because uh, our endpoint is whether this can reduce uh, dengue infections in the community. So we did the uh, cluster randomized control trial. We divide the city into 24 clusters. Um, half got the intervention and half will be the control areas. And the way we randomize this is through, we call it public randomization. Um, there's no way to do blind, blinding for this. So we divide 12 intervention and 12 uh, control areas. And in this trial, basically, we are trying to compare uh, incidents of dengue uh, among people that live in the Wolbachia uh, treated areas versus control areas. Uh, we were able to trace also the uh, mobili uh, mobilization of the people for the past uh, 10 days. And yeah, and the, and the result is based on comparing the uh, incidents in treated and control areas. Uh, and this is the result. So our, our efficacy is 77%, and this is much higher than our hypothesis, because our hypothesis, we stated at more than 50%. And um, this 77% also um, work uh, regardless of the serotypes of dengue. As you could see here, I think the efficacy varies you know, 71 to 83, a bit large uh, standard deviation for the dengue virus 3 because the number is very small. And in addition to that, also uh, we found that the hospitalized uh, dengue cases, now dengue here is um, Virologically confirmed, so it's not just on people clinical uh, symptoms, but really lab confirmed. And it shows here that uh, reduction of uh, hospitalized dengue is 86% lower in Wolbachia treated rather uh, compared to Wolbachia control, control areas. So very large reduction of hospitalized uh, dengue cases. So uh, from, from that result, uh, this result was, was uh, then uh, brought to uh, discussion in the FECAC Factor Control Advisory Group in WHO. And we are very proud to, to share that uh, FECAC has recommended uh, this strategy, factor control strategy, and they uh, asked the WHO to develop the uh, implementation guideline for this technology. So indeed, this is uh, going to the direction that, that we would like to, to have. Now, in the final part, I think for this kind of intervention, uh, it, it has to work with a very high community acceptance, stakeholder acceptance, because there's no way we can do it without, without their approval. And one of the uh, challenges is how, how do we manage to send the message without really compromising what the uh, dengue control program is trying to do. So um, in this way, I think this, this slide is showing that this, whenever we talk about health, I think women play an important role and also the same in, in, in um, Indonesia, in Yogyakarta. And they said, uh, although they understand about this Wolbachia intervention, uh, but this is their testimony. There are, they are still doing this uh, mosquito breeding control. They are still actively involved in the healthy housing program uh, as they used to be. So that this um, method doesn't change uh, their behavior towards uh, factor control in general. Yeah. 
Um, the, the work with the community has involved a lot with activities to build trust. So what I'm saying here is that we are trying to bring the community closer to us in addition to also ourselves uh, be present and more actively involved in the community activities. So for example, this is our uh, diagnostic lab. Uh, this is the most sophisticated lab in the Faculty of Medicine, thanks to Tahir. Uh, our senior biological molecular expert trying to explain to the community how do we, uh, how do we screen for Wolbachia. Um, of course, using a simple language that they, they can understand and that they appreciate. And this is another example of how we educate the community. We are trying to use more innovative uh, methods. And because cycling is still very popular, so we have this, what we call the bike uh, propaganda on bike uh, or pit propaganda. And then these people, they have scheduled to go around the community and sometimes they stop and they have uh, games with them to educate the children, the community. And this has been very attractive <laughs> in the community. Um, obviously, when we deal with the large um, areas, um, thinking about city level, district, or even a province level, we cannot do a face-to-face -face, uh, approach with the community. So we need to have another strategy, which is uh, using the uh, all the different mass media and also public campaign type of uh, activities. And this is something that we uh, also learned during this uh, project. And I'm proud to say that we are present uh, very present in the national and also um, international media. And this was just an example during our launching of the result last year. Right, so in, in summary, I think uh, what we would like to say is that the efficacy is good. The technology works, uh, reducing 77% of dengue incidents is, um, is fantastic, I think and efficacy against all four serotypes and even uh, reducing hospitalization. And we know from the public health point of view that the intervention is self-sustaining, which is very good. We don't need to release the mosquitoes for the second or third time. It's just done once in a good way, um, resilient and also equitable. And so far, yeah, this is the only uh, trial in, in, uh, in the world for intervention targeted with a, you know, very large um, areas. Um, some economic evaluation study, this is done by uh, independent, uh, actually from a group in the US. And they've shown that this is expected to be cost saving, uh, particularly in the urban setting of Indonesia. So with this result, we have now completed our release in the control areas. And also this year, we've started with deploying in the surrounding uh, districts. And I think um, I will uh, stop here and ask also Faisal to uh, show uh, the last video. Uh, I think I'll, I'll, I'll just show uh, my final slides that uh, we, yeah, we really hope that with the technology, uh, we know for sure that it works. And then now we are uh, trying to explore how we can implement this, um, uh, not in the research uh, type of activities, but really with the community. So we are trying to work together with the district health office and with the caters, community caters in the surrounding areas. So this work is also um, still challenging how to find the best strategy to implement. And we hope, uh, you know, we would be able to scale up the technology to protect more Indonesian people from getting dengue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Uwut. And it must be, you know, amazing and congratulations. And we're so proud of you. Uh, before we go to... Dr. Claudia, I just want to acknowledge uh, Patriadi Saktoadi, who's the CEO of Tahia Foundation and who really helped us to uh, get and organize this, this program. Thank you, Patri. Um, so um, next, I guess all this great uh, 
um, results, I guess it has to be implemented, which is, uh, I guess, Indonesia wide and even more so, which is always the probably one of the most difficult things. So uh, we have here uh, Dr. Claudia Suryajaya, who is the um, Asia Regional Director of the World uh, Mosquito Program Global. And uh, Dr. Uh, Claudia has more than 20 years experience in the public health sector. And uh, she's you know, very active in Southeast Asia, but also, um, also she has worked um, for years for, uh, in the government health program also in, in Papua. So uh, Dr. Claudia, uh, please, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Can you see my sh my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. So thanks. Um, when when uh, I, um, I heard about Harvard, I remember that uh, one day in my dorm, actually in Soldiers Park, at the Kennedy School of Government, and then we're talking about insect. There was a big insect on the wall in my room. And then I tried to call the receptionist because it looks like a big hornet with wings. And I was like being like, okay, should I smack it? Should I not? So I called the receptionist and a big guy came and then he looked at it and he said like, okay, madam, just wait, I'll come back. But when he didn't come back and then the insect starts flying. And of course, as Indonesian, I always travel with sandal to pit or flip flop. And you know the rest, what happened. So that's only one insect. What about mosquitoes? When we have so many mosquitoes, the magic of Sandal Jepit will not be effective. So that's good that we now have this Voltagia method that is already proven effective, but also sustainable. So the World Mosquito Program is uh, actually a not-for-profit initiative that are uh, protecting communities around the world from mosquito prone disease, actually from Aedes aegypti. So there was four diseases, it's uh, uh, dengue, chikungunya, yellow beaver, and Zika. So we work in uh, several regions, uh, but currently we work in 11 countries around the world. Uh, next, please. Oh, I, am I sharing? Okay. So this is where we work. It started 10 years ago in a, a small town in Australia, Townsville, by our, our program director, Professor Scott O'Neill. And we just actually celebrated last year the 10 years uh, anniversary of our first project there. And then the World Bank establishment is still there and there is no dengue cases after 10 years of release. So we work in three regions. We work in Latin America, so the Americas hub in Colombia, Mexico, and Brazil. We work in New Caledonia. We will do another release or long-term monitoring in New Caledonia, actually. And then we will have release soon in Vietnam. Uh, this is another place. We, we did release in, in, uh, in central Vietnam before, years ago. And uh, soon next year, in January, we will have another release in, in Vietnam, in South Vietnam. And in Indonesia, you already heard Professor Uut presentation and also Pak Saipon. It was a very successful RCT and mass control trial. This is the first one. And then in Sri Lanka, we just finished as well our release and we're going to end this uh, wider Colombo uh, end of this year. So, uh, so I'll just skip this. Uh, we all know the dinghy, the dinghy incidents and the disease burden. This is already presented and then also chikungunya in Indonesia. And then uh, what's next after, after the RCT successful result? So we plan to actually work in the seven priority cities in Indonesia. And then uh, this is targeted investment 300 to 500 million. But again, this is depending on the large of the population in the, in, in the area. So what by this, we can, we can save actually uh, uh, back two or three times investment. This sounds like really big, 300, 500 million only in, in seven cities. But this, uh, the return on investment is over 10 years. It can actually reduce the healthcare costs, worker loss wages, and human capital. And in total, we can afford 1 million cases and save 500 lives every year. 
So why Indonesia? Indonesia is actually an ideal climate for Voltakia. So this is our map uh, from the Cap and Kuiper climate classification map of Indonesia for uh, 36 years. And then you can see the legend on the right. I just skip it, but this is the ideal place for Voltakia. That's why like we would say release only one time and it will be sustainable. So these are our priority uh, province and cities. But this is our plan. We, of course, we will we will collaborate with Ministry of Health and uh, provincial health office and district health office. So in summary, we work in, with with government and also as we already saw from the from the video, many video, we always work with community. Without the community acceptance. We, we cannot be successful because again, community has a vital role and usually from each side, we, we engage community. And this is like the longer, uh, longer period of the project actually to engage in, in a community and to have a community acceptance. So if we have two, two years project, usually the first year is always to have a buy-in and acceptance from the community, which is very important in the sustainability. Okay, so that's uh, that's my presentation because I understand I only have like 10 minutes and we have a lot of question and answers hopefully so we can have more uh, thorough discussion. Thank you. Oh, I want to also thank you, of course, Tahia Foundation for believing in this methodology. I saw the, the struggle about Saikon and family and uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Claudia. And, uh, you know, I just want to say this is personally also like everybody else touch me, um, you know, I've had dengue twice in my life and both my sons had dengue last year, which was in the middle of the pandemic, which was uh, very, very stressful. So uh, it's amazing if this can be indeed um, become a reality in Indonesia. So. With that, I would like to uh, open it to uh, questions. I think uh, our group is small enough that, uh, so whoever wants to, uh, let's take turn, but uh, whoever wants to uh, ask um, a question, please unmute yourself and, uh, and hopefully uh, please ask the questions in a concise manner. Thank you so much. Hasan? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, uh, past president. Our, <laughs> yes. our, our past elder president. In, the, in the club. Our, yeah. So. yeah, yeah. The the pandemic turned my hair white all <laughs> over, all over. Uh, thank you very much for the very very uh, uh, insightful presentation and very informative. Uh, especially to a lay person like me. I, I actually have, I think uh, my colleagues here know that, it, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of person that has a zillion questions coming up in my mind already, but um, I'll see which ones, feel free to answer which ones you like. But f my first question is, uh, th does it work for all variants of dengue or is there such a thing as a, a dengue variant? And... Uh, Will it produce, is, is there the risk of, of a resistant variant um, be, coming up because of this intervention? Um, and then the, the role of the community was interesting, uh, but does it, would would the program be successful even if the community was not as involved? Uh, it's uh, how how is there a quantification for how much the the role of the community had um, when it separated from the technology itself in reducing the the dengue and. Um, what are the biggest cost components of, of, of such a program when, when, it wants, when we want to introduce it in a, in a much wider scale? 
I think I'll just leave it to those three, although, okay, well, maybe there's a fourth question um, lingering in my mind is, is there a, a patent involved here? Is, is this a proprietary technology or is it, is it, will it be totally open to, to, to the public? So thank you very much for the presentation and uh, thank you for answering my questions. Feel free for any of the speakers to, 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 to answer, thank you. maybe you'd like to start? Yeah, just to respond to some of the uh, questions. Thank you for the questions. Uh, regarding the uh, different types of uh, dengue, uh, serotypes, so we have four serotypes. And what our study showed is that um, this works in all the four serotypes of dengue. Um, um, yeah. So uh, it's just that for dengue virus three, we have the confidence interval is, is uh, very wide because we have less uh, dengue with dengue virus three in Yogyakarta. But um, otherwise, if looking at the efficacy uh, ranging from 71 to 83.8, so it shows that it works in, in the four serotypes of dengue. Um, and then regarding uh, the uh, what what could happen if the community are not so enthusiastic? Is that a question? <laughs> yeah, uh, but Hassan, yeah, it's interesting. And yeah, I think Jogja has a unique uh, characteristics of the community yeah, that they are. Uh, I would say they are so open-minded, and they they let themselves to be a control areas, even if they know that this uh, this technology uh, has has a lot of promise. So in this in this regard, I think uh, this is one of the 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 thing why why we need to try out in in different communities uh, outside Jakarta and see what type of, of uh, engagement should be there. What's the minimum engagement that, that it, it requires? Um, in the case of Jogjakarta, actually, we have uh, examples where they are very enthusiastic, but even, even though in the pandemic uh, situation, yeah, we stopped for a while because of the Darurat and the level four, but uh, this week we have started again and, and the community was very, very enthusiastic. Um, yeah, uh, but we are aware that there are other uh, uh, model, which perhaps Bu, Bu Claudia will share later. The model that we use here in Sleman is to work with the district district health office. So working with the government, which is, you know, one model. But people may also question what if, you know, we work in different areas where the government uh, doesn't have, you know, very high capacity um, to, to do this. So that's uh, another model to explore in the implementation. Yeah, maybe that uh, that's my response, pa, pa Hassan, for the moment uh, about the cost, maybe part three is in a better <laughs> position to respond. Part three or Bu Claudia, you want to add? Claudia, do that. Yeah, thank you, Tri. Uh, so I actually, Pak Hassan, terima kasih banyak. I mentioned that without the community, it will uh, very difficult if it's not sustainable. So, um, and uh, as Bu would mentioned, we, we, we tried several uh, other methods in other countries as well. And then we're using voluntary health workers or kader, kalau di Indonesia, village kadre as well. And then also we, uh, we work with uh, community-based organizations or a uh, faith-based organization. So sometimes we combine this uh, uh, staff release and then also with the uh, community and the community health workers. And then it, it's proven that uh, this synergy is more effective because usually the village gatherer, they live in the village. So they know, they know everyone already and they, they can move around. 
and they, they used to, uh, to do this uh, as part of the education campaign or other health campaign. And uh, we are very careful with this uh, community uh, acceptance. So we have actually what we call it uh, PAM. So this is participation acceptance model. This is our system in WMP, which we have to follow rigorously. So anybody has a, has a complaint, for example, uh, maybe the mosquitoes um, uh, quant uh, quant quantity will be, will be more than usual. So they have the mechanism to also have this complaint mechanism and we also have a mechanism to monitor everything. So everyone who opted to, to get the bucket or, or the mosquito release container, they can, can also at any time say no or refuse as so like the, and then we will be okay so we will we are very very careful on this and it's our focus so community is everything for us thanks over to you three claudia you may uh, respond to the intellectual property rights i think that's uh, san asked that question yeah, well, actually, it's already patented under WMP because there are several other methods, like uh, Shaipon also mentioned, there is also the sterilized male mosquitoes. I think Singapore has this, and, uh, and as also in the US. But for the, for the female mosquitoes, we release female mosquitoes in this Wolbachia, so this is already patented. But again, I got this question many times from other countries, but madam, what happened if the mosquitoes fly? You know, we, we, we cannot <laughs> prevent mosquitoes fly or people catching the mosquitoes. Well, I, of course, this is public health goods. So all research we believe is to be applied for public health benefit. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, yeah, for the cost, of implementation, um, Sleman and Banto are now under, undergone this uh, program. So from now, our budget to cover the two district is around one and uh, five million US dollars. That's where cover, I don't know, probably would maybe give us numbers of population. Um, both district have a uh, have a population of maybe half million, 500,000 people. So as Pastor Akon mentioned earlier, this would be really cost effective if you look into the number of population and the current, uh, not only current, the, 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 the previous and current budget that is spent. So Prabhu maybe can give us some comparison. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if that is okay, I'd like to. Um, I think Leo has a has a question. Leo, if I, if, thank you for the opportunity, uh, Daniel. Uh, let me turn my video on for a moment, just so you can see. This is an old man asking a question over here. Uh, hello, everyone. Let me just uh, make the observation that this, uh, I found this an extremely impressive uh, program that has been implemented in Indonesia and congratulations needs to go to everyone concerned. It is truly um, a big step forward in public health. Uh, by way of innovative, novel interventions. So, you know, my, my sincere congratulations and thanks to the Tahia family for the human, humanitarian um, philanthropic support to get this program, to enable it to happen. And then to all those scientists and uh, public health practitioners involved, deepest congratulations to your job well done uh you know you deserve uh humanity's thanks because other viruses are on the increase uh, aedes is a transmitter of uh, many of the most serious arboviral infections including dengue chikungunya zika yellow fever etc we don't know why yellow fever hasn't already at least i don't know 
uh, established itself in Asia. It'll be a disaster if it does. So, you know, having something like Volbachia available is wonderful and very reassuring. Let me stop rambling and ask my question. So I, I work for Malaria Consortium based in Bangkok, but I support our programs in Cambodia and Myanmar. And we did a WHO funded uh, project in Cambodia over two years, it finished last year, where we did uh, vector control, but there wasn't enough money to pull it through to look at what was the impact of vector control on dengue reduction. And that's been the frustration with many of the, the, the dengue vector control projects is that you can demonstrate effective population reduction of the mosquitoes, but you don't know how that translates to disease reduction. So it's, it's absolutely wonderful to see that, you know, by using Volbachia, you can achieve 77% reduction immediately. And for months already, I've been saying to my headquarters in London, this is something we need to explore and understand better so we can apply it in countries like Cambodia, Myanmar, where, you know, dengue is a serious problem as in other countries in Asia, uh, but these just happen to be countries that we're involved in and we know that dengue is a problem. Then I'm faced with a problem. I don't know, I don't know enough about this program and I don't really know who to contact. I've sent a few emails, but I get the impression uh, the World Mosquito Program is so inundated by emails and people making inquiries. It's not always easy to get a response. And my question was be, uh, is, how does, if we want to start a similar program in Cambodia, what are the starting points? Do we have to, you know, how much funding do we need to try and aim for? Thankfully, if I understood you correct, um, it seems like, but the, the conversation was a bit broken. I didn't hear it very well. I get the impression about 5 million US dollars should be a ball 500,000 people. If somebody can just confirm or give an, a ballpark figure, what is the kind of budget one has to keep in mind if you want to get serious about applying a Volbachia program in, in, for example, a country like Cambodia? I'm sorry I spoke to, uh, so long, uh, but thank you for the time. Thank you sincerely. Thank you, Leo. Uh, maybe Dr. Claudia want to answer or? Yeah, so thanks, thanks, Leo. I work in malaria for many years as well, so I know, I know the group. Uh, well, actually, uh, we work, WMP work in Myanmar. It was not on the map because we, we still did the, the baseline entomo entomological study. But now it, with its finish and, of course, the situation of Myanmar, we cannot continue with a, with a phase one pilot. So uh, that is a million dollar question in reality. So uh, it's very depending on how many populations, uh, the density of the coverage area. And of course, to, to open a new site, it will be different costs when there is like in, in Yogyakarta, the facility is already there, the staff already trained, UKM has been our implementing partners and collaborator for years. And then so it's already there, the infrastructure. But when we open something like our, in our plan, next will be Denpasa, that will be totally a new sign. So different price tag as well, Leo. So, um, and I apologize if you send a lot of emails to WMP and get no response. That's probably before my time. So now you can email me anytime. And of course, sure, I will answer, I will respond. And yes, Cambodia. So yeah, of course, uh, we, we, we had a preliminary discussion with Cambodia, but the important thing as well, we need the country buy-in before we start uh, you know, doing something in the country. Thanks. That's very useful. Thank you so much, Dr. Claudia. I appreciate that. Thank you.
Thank you. Um, I guess uh, uh, Dr. Claudia and others on the call, maybe Patri, uh, this really question that when can, you know, how we can get um, uh, our government, this is in regarding Indonesia to help to roll this out as, as soon as possible. I know you, you showed us the, uh, the, uh, the funding need and stuff is, you know, is, can this be uh, a priority soon? That question to me again. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, actually, um, UGM has been working or have been working with Ministry of Health as well and then supporting our first national dengue strategy. So it was just launched on the 30th, 30th of July. So it's very new. And in this strategy or strategy six, Wolbachia is mentioned. So on the research and innovation along with the dengue vaccine. So this is a start that that's, uh, it's there, it's in the program. But again, it's, there are steps. And then I've, I've worked with Ministry of Health as well on this uh, to, 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 to plan and then to discuss about the work plan. Where are the priorities area that the government wants? Because again, like Jakarta, we have outbreak at dengue every year, almost every year, it's yet guaranteed. And then Bali is also high incidence of dengue and this is like a tourist destination. So all of this are uh, ongoing, but is in the process. And then um, we, the, and then the lead by, uh, led by Ministry of Health. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Um, there's a question on the, on the chat that uh, is saying and, uh, that Matt Geo uh, mentioned that there's a kind of similar program uh, in Singapore. I think that's the Google, the Google Verily uh, program. And uh, is this similar, or uh, are you working together with them? Or how you know? Is I guess more people addressing these issues, uh, you know, the better. But uh, you know. Yeah, I think I mentioned before when I responded that Singapore has different method. So it's a, I, I will let uh, Bu uh, to explain, uh, clarify better on this uh, on, on this method. So they use uh, male mosquitoes. So over to you, Bu. Yeah, and I'm happy that uh, the uh, we have the entomology expert joining this uh, session. Also, I saw Pa Warsito. Yeah, to continue uh, a little bit, Singapore is using the male, uh, releasing male only uh, mosquitoes with the hope that the, the mechanism by release, releasing male uh, mosquitoes only is to bring down the population of mosquitoes. Uh, but in order to do this, I think there's, uh, now of course, in any method, there's uh, uh, strength and weaknesses. Uh, in a way, releasing male, maybe it's uh, uh, complying to the regulation because it's trying to reduce the population. However, in order to do that, they need to release uh, a large number of mosquitoes, very large number of mosquitoes. And it's not a one point, one time intervention that maybe in different times they need to release it again. So that uh, requires uh, a big factory uh, mosquito, even, even only for the size of, of Singapore. I would say this WMB uh, method is much more sustainable, um, given that the community understands the, what's the uh, technology, the core of the technology, and it's, it's already proven through a very, very high standard scientifically. So it's a it's a different method that they use. Thank you, thank you, Prof. Uh, any other question? Um, I guess we are. Uh, I guess five minutes to three o'clock. I'm uh, aware of that. Maybe one or two last questions. Yeah, Bubu Claudia, maybe you have touched on these questions. There's a question on. Um, uh, on can the implementation phase started in many areas, <laughs> as as many areas as as possible? Yeah. 
Yeah, we're working on that. And especially in Indonesia, we're working closely with the Ministry of Health. But the next one uh, we'll discuss is Bali. And this is also with the hope to uh, revive the tourism industry. Because Bali got hit so bad. And then uh, and Bali also the, ha have the highest incidence of dengue. Five of the five of the uh, top ten uh, sites in Indonesia from Bali districts. We do have requests from other, but we also have limited capacity, so uh, it's unplanned. And then uh, we're working strategically with uh, with counterparts like with UKM as well as with many other stakeholders. Thank you. Any other question? I guess let me ask a question. I guess what uh, what can uh, we who are on this call uh, do in any small ways or you know share uh, the information? How do we help uh, this program um, to be implemented in in Indonesia? Uh, maybe that's either to Prof. Wood or Patriadi or uh, Dr. Claudia? I think spread the news. Spread the news that we do have effective method. That, that's number one. So in our own circle, like Dr. Saikon and the family can tell the business partners that uh, this works. And then academicians like UKM and uh, people, uh, our, our collaborators, our implementers at UKM as well can say this to other universities. So spread the news. There is a hope, an effective one. Thank you. Thank you. So maybe uh, each, uh, uh, each panelist, maybe uh, some last uh, words, maybe uh, starting with, um, I think, Dr. Claudia has your last word already, but uh, maybe uh, Professor Uhud and then uh, Patriadi and then and then Dr. Shakon. Thank you. So is it me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I would say that this is uh, a golden opportunity for Indonesia to show that uh, we can implement evidence-based public health intervention. And it's really through, we have the evidence now, um, very good, very high evidence. And, and it's, it's really more of a different level of conversation to, to we need to have in order to say that this country is implementing evidence-based public health intervention. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Uh, Patriadi? Thank you. Patriadi. I just would like to say thank you to Harvard Club for this uh, discussion. And please share this to your networks. Uh, we need support for this. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, Dr. Shakon. Thank you also to the Harvard Club uh, for this opportunity. From us, I would say that this method of blocking dengue transmission has been proven beyond a doubt scientifically. The safety, the efficacy has been proven. I would say it has to be from the district or local governments yeah that come and ask for this to be implemented remembering that it's not enough it's certainly not enough just to have the district governments to want it a huge part of the effort is communicating with the population and getting them on board that they actually want this to be done if you can convince the population this is a good, this is a safe method, yeah, then uh, half the battle is won because the technology is already established. It or we know it already works. I know in each area that you go into, the scientists like Pat Warsito will have to go in and look at the local mosquitoes to the determine uh, their characteristics, to determine 
their um, sensitivity towards insecticides and other things like that. Because the mosquitoes that are released with the Wolbachia in the community are created so that they are exactly the same as possible as the local mosquitoes there. Yeah. So that's the technology. But the people aspect is very important also. It's, it's ready to be uh, applied. Of course, there are uh, technological things like how, how many mosquitoes do you have to breed, what kind of mosquito factory or whatever has to be done. But I think number one is the local government. Number two is getting the local people on board that they accept this. And then of course, it's the, uh, the mechanics of creating enough mosquitoes and uh, working with WMP on this proprietary method. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Shakon. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, I thank all of you for doing this, which can be a game changer for Indonesia and for all of us. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, Inuru, you want to close the the session? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Danielle. So once again, uh, we really thanks all of our speakers here uh, already share their experience, their learnings, uh, their challenges in the past 10 years. I could only imagine what are those challenges that Prof. Adi and Dr. Claudia and Dr. Shakon has uh, faced. Um, it, it must have been um, a, 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 a one of our great rides in the past 10 years. And we really are looking forward on the implementation phase after this. Uh, we hope that we won't be talking about um, dengue fever anymore or hear more stories about um, close friends or families who have dengue fever. Uh, hopefully maybe one or two or five years from now that we just share uh, the history of dengue and none of our family have um, any dengue anymore. Um, so hopefully that um, Indonesia will lead on um, ending the era of a dengue epidemic. Uh, while we still have pandemic to face, but um, at least we have one hope on dengue. And again, we thank you for all the great works and the, the opportunities to share with us. Uh, we will share the discussions uh, to more people. I already post some of the uh, link that Patri Hadi shared in the Harvard Club Indonesia WhatsApp group. Um, we have we hope to have um, as many people to hear the great works. So thank you so much, um, Prof. Oot, Dr. Claudia, Pak Shakon, Dr. Shakon, uh, Patri Hadi, and also Daniel where they connect Harvard Club Indonesia with Tahija Foundations. And thank you for all the participants for the uh, questions and the enthusiasm. I know it's uh, Wednesday afternoon, uh, but we're happy that we have this intimate discussion that we can go um, deeper and to understand more about uh, this great work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stay healthy, everyone. Stay healthy, everyone. Bye. Thank you.